you go. All right, guys, let's get it started. We'll probably have a few more come in as we get going. And, um, you know, I, I do want to take this opportunity before we get into the, um, the, into the rest of the service tonight to thank all of you for being here on um, Monday night. It was a good success. Thanks for all the workers, you know, and we'll also say it again on Sunday. But thank you. And, and uh, be praying for the ones who got saved. How many of you know, you know, when you... us from the endless love of God's anointed one absolutely no one everybody say that with me no one listen to this for nothing in the universe has the power to diminish his love toward us and it says this troubles pressures and problems are unable to come between us and heaven's love what about persecutions deprivations dangers and death threats Listen to this. No, for they are all impotent to hinder omnipotent love. And, and, you know, we read this last week, and I know we ended on this portion of Scripture, but I, I just, I just want to take a little bit of time tonight, and I want to encourage you, no matter what you're going through, what's going on in your life, 
Don't dare give up when you're in the middle of anything like troubles or persecution or pressures. Everybody say pressures. You know, we're going we're gonna to deal with a couple of these things tonight. And just, just uh, I want to encourage you to just learn, learn how not to collapse under pressure, but how to handle pressure and live victorious regardless of what pressure comes against you. And, w- and we'll look at some things. I've got a few statements I want to make first. And, um, you know, uh, you know if, if you – let me c- catch up with my notes for just a minute. How do you stop something from becoming a problem? Have you ever thought about this? How many, how many, I've got to be really careful here. So how many of you had what was called problem children? <laughs> Do they make anything other than, you know, and, uh, and kids see things different. Come on, y'all. They, they, they operate different. You know, one of my kids, and that way I don't bar- embarrass anybody until I'm ready to, but one of my kids, they knew they couldn't go into a certain room in the house, and they would walk over to the door and stand right on the threshold of the door. And we would tell them, don't go in that room. And they would step in that room, you know. And so how do you handle it? How do you stop something from becoming a problem? There's only one way to do it, guys. Don't let it become a problem for you. You know, we had to realize that parents, our job was to instruct the kids, speak to the kids, this is not comfortable sometimes how they discipline the kids and make sure they understood, you know, what was necessary and, and help them along in life. If they, if they became a problem and we let it become a biggest, the biggest problem in our lives, if we let it become our kids, then it would have made life miserable. And it's the same thing in your life. You can have issues, you can have problems, you can have all kinds of stuff going on, but you have to choose to let that problem control you. And there's three things you can do. You can choose to speak to the problem, do what's necessary to overcome the problem, and all in all, or you can let the problem overcome you because that's the, that's the two things that are going to happen. And if you're going to figure it out and work through the conversation, so the conversation is going to overpower you and you're going to submit to the problem. So how do you stop from thinking you know, the problem is going to work through the problem? Well, you know, um, Jesus figured I don't know if you just started, and we should be able to know it. You know, he had a stick on the same thing, you know, one time he walked on up. He didn't let the storm just stop him from doing anything. He learned how to talk to him regardless of what was going on. Right? Um, I mean, one time he was asleep in the boat. I still haven't figured it out. You can hardly, some people can't even hardly ride on the boat. And still water and stuff. You know, Jesus was in the boat and he was asleep. The storm came up. All the disciples came to him and said, Don't you care that we're about to pay? Jesus got up and stood on the edge of the boat and spoke to the sea. I'm going to go to the boat and I'm going to go to the I'm just trying to pay you back to the boat and I'm going to go to the boat. But why would you focus on how you focus on the day? Because you have to take the day and go. You get really bad. And, uh, because how you focus makes all the difference in the world. You can make anything an issue a problem. You can also make anything a mind issue. Just by how you do it. How you look at it. How you know it. It challenges you and it challenges your faith. But if I'm learning this, you know, I can get up in the face of someone and go home and feel really good about it, and I don't get tired. I'm talking about my own mind. And the problem is, but I can get up and take the same and I think it's the worst thing that I've ever done. Everybody in church will come to me and say, that's the best thing that I've ever heard, but I'm not going to stop. But that's one of the problems for us. And every time that that has happened, they say, so what is it? Every time that that has happened, what ends up happening is, to judge how the word was placed in people and how they received by the attack that came to each of my own mind. I don't make any sense. The bigger the attack, the more I know what it's about. And so, right there, we have to have a lot of accomplished things. Right? So, we all can have problems. Come on, guys, this is what I'm trying to tell you. Nobody is exempt from having a problem. You're going to have them at some point in time. It, it may happen in life. How do you focus on the problem that it's in the world? And if you make the problem the biggest thing in your life, 
let me show you this in a different way. If you ever heard somebody just say something to you, you didn't like it, you never had to tell anybody. I know that. But even that time you're speaking, you don't like it. You ever heard your husband or wife say something to you and say, you're telling me you're doing it? I 
Jesus and they were listening. Oh, then someone jumped out and scared you. Hey! Sometimes they were. They were right. But they say, what is the people? Stopped in the baby room. They got something that got stopped in the house. I did nothing to speak to you. I'm saying, when you get stuck in somebody else's little Somebody will be. Somebody will be. Somebody will be. And at one point, the Lord takes out the book, stops us from living. All of a sudden, the Lord is going to be a good thing. And he says, Listen, this is not a good thing. This This is what I said is, I need to get into a success. I need to be prepared to see that trouble is going to be back in the end of the world. It's a good thing. Trouble is going to be back in the end of the world. It's a good thing to get into the end of the world. It's a good thing to get into the end of the world. It's a good thing to get into the end of the world. It's a good thing to get into the end of the world. You know, you have to learn how to handle the end of the world. You have to learn how to handle the end of the world. I'm not going to be very difficult. Not me. We all can be difficult because our needs can be strengthened. I mean, you know, it would be nice if everybody that we knew were at war made the needs of each other on the other hand. One man made the needs, you know, 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 but it wouldn't make life a lot easier. I mean, there's two things we could do. There's two things that we could do. And it wouldn't be nice to do that at all. We could unplug that people and tell them that we need to do it. It wouldn't be nice if we had a new room where we could figure out what was going on, what's 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 going on. So, that means difficult. I mean, it is tough with what I said to you. And listen to this, guys. This is just a demo thing. This is what it means. Matter is not a mess of our thoughts. Matter is sexual harm. Things that matter when you're feeling so much that you need to get it sexual your feelings, your emotions, what you feel with you, and you can do things like that. You ever been in a tight space and you realize at that point in time you might be possible to get it? You can do it like you did with me in the military. You have to handle it. I can handle a lot of things that hit me and blame me. It's stupid, more than basic, it's stupid, it's probably in my skin. But if you have this happen to me, it's a good thing to hit me and blame me. It's the same thing I can't do anything but be proud of me and my heart beat. The last year and a half has happened, it hit me in the small room, and it left me with about 45 or 50 minutes. And I'm sitting there, all I can hear is every time I slide, but every time my heart can't go. And I need to know, to me, the room was a foot by a foot. By the time the room was a foot by a foot, and I see that. And you know why that comes from? They were testing me to see if I could handle it in certain places. Because part of my job was going to be in the house. We didn't, we didn't open the record. You know, sometimes you were stuck inside there with other guys. And you had to figure out how to make it work, no matter what. They were checking me to see how it was. And I didn't realize I was tough to take. And I had a decision to make because they were watching me even though I didn't know it. They were listening to me even though I didn't know it. And they were waiting on a reaction. And if I had a free thought, Everybody say that we're being freaked out. I don't even know what the freak means. Because I knew I couldn't handle what was best. But that room started out there before I started out there. But by the time I was finished, it was small. Because the room was empty. Think about it. We're getting it done. The reason why I got small is because I was. This is what Texas did. 
isn't it better to do something else? Also, we have a few steps of our success. We have a lot of steps. 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 This is the thing that I saw. Genius is a good thing. And I can see that something is wrong. But this is not an expected thing. Genius is. How about the something that you can do for all of you? And the answer is not an expected thing. So, this is what I'm going to ask you. We can get people to come from some point. Thank 
Don't rag it in your mouth. I want you to hear this. Listen to what it says. And it talks about the Spirit being opposed to the flesh, the Bible saying the human nature. It says, the demons is talking about the, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit um, guiding us and the human nature guiding us. These two are antagonistic. And when I first saw this years ago, I saw this, and it really meant something to me because I understand what a tug of war is. How many of you have ever played tug of war? Can I ask you something? How many of you have ever won a tug of war? How many of you have ever lost a tug of war? You remember both, don't you? Pam, one time, she was in the front of our tug of war. And she decided everybody else was behind her and the other team was on the other end. She decided she was going to give her team the upper hand and she wrapped the rope around her arm. Get me back. The other team started pulling, and this team started pulling, and this was the point that was the weakest. What she thought was the strong point became the weakest point. I thank God we yelled and stopped, but she still, how long did that thing, she got a rope burn? Huh? And she still has a scar from it. This is the thing, you, you, can, you can do things your way, but when I, every time I think about this verse of Scripture, about how these two are antagonistic. Everybody say that with me, antagonistic. That means they're in a tug of war continually. Listen to what it says. With each other continually withstanding and in and conflict with one another. So in other words, when your flesh starts telling you to do something, you need to understand it's leading you wrong. Unless it lines up with the Spirit. Okay, I won't even spend any time on that one then. They're in conflict with each other so that you are not free. Listen to what it says, guys. So that you are not free and are prevented. Everybody say prevented. From doing on the floor so when I got by the time I got there the damage was so bad that even some of the floor joists were rotten and she was walking I don't I won't even call it by faith by chance so when I got there you know I gutted things and put new floor joists in come on guys put new wood in secured it on both ends you know what I'm saying made it right Put down, you know, it was an old house, so I had to go get wood milled to be able to fit the floor so I could level the floor up. Had a guy that really helped me.
to me and God to go again. He forgives every one of all your iniquities. Come on, y'all. What does all mean in the Greek or Hebrew? You know, say, all. Those will do it all, your iniquities. Are y'all with me still? Who heals? Everybody say heals. Here's another, here's another, here's another promise, guys. We gotta get this one. We got we need them all, but you understand? I don't know. Who heals each one of all your diseases? That means every disease, God takes care of it. Come on. I mean, is this a promise? It's a promise. Don't let it continue to be a problem. Find out what the word says. Stand on the word. Well, I don't see it yet. Well, you're not supposed to be moving by what you see anyway. We walk by faith, not by sight. Come on, y'all. He heals all, each one of all your diseases. Listen to verse 4. You ready for this? Who redeemed? Everybody say, I'm redeemed. What does that mean? I've been purchased by a great price. Do you understand? God looked at me and saw me valuable enough that He sent His Son and He redeemed me from everything that the world is going to say. I'm redeemed. I don't know about you, but I'm redeemed. That's a promise, isn't it? That's a promise. He redeems your life from the pit and corruption. Listen to this, guys. I, I can't go through all of them, but I'm just going to read a couple more. He beautifies. Come on, y'all. Don't look at me like that. I'm, I'm telling you right. God beautifies our lives. You know, when we walk in the promises of God, it affects my countenance. You understand? I'm, an, I'm not a gloom and doom. Man, I'm an up and fun. Do you understand? I mean, I'm not stuck, focused on the problem. Because when you focus on the problem, the problem would just suck the life right out of you. I know there's a problem, but I focus on the promise, and the promise gives me the power to overcome, and it affects my countenance. Did you know this? When you got an overcomer, you'd never see an overcomer like this. Not again. That ain't an overcomer. That's not an overcomer. Do you understand? That's being overcome. Come on, y'all. Somebody. <laughs> he beautifies us. He dignifies us. Do you understand? He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. He, he, his mercy is in you every day, man. Every morning we get up, we got a fresh load. You want to handle everything that will come your way, plus whatever you run into in somebody else's life. Not only do you carry enough mercy for you, you carry enough mercy for everybody else unless you focus on the problem and not the promise. You ought to be carrying real bad, full of mercy for people. You throw a mercy all over everybody. But see, if you get stuck in a problem, you won't, you won't operate in the mercy because the problem becomes the main focus. Can you put the picture back up one more time? If you can, see? Beautiful screen. doesn't mean the birds don't exist. It seems I focus the wrong way. Man. Come on, y'all. You just focus the wrong way. See, the problem is not that God's not enough. The problem is you're focusing too much on the problem instead of focusing on the problem. Verse 5, and then I'll tell you, he's satisfied. Come on, your mouth, your necessity and desire. I love this. of your personal age and situation. Isn't that good? Doesn't matter how young. Doesn't matter how old. God says, I'm taking care of you. I got you. Whatever's necessary. You know, younger people seem to be lower maintenance than older people. But you know what? It doesn't matter to God. God's got to figure it out for you with your personal age and whatever's going on in your life. It's always more than enough. There's a promise. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, I could go all kinds of places right now. We have to get on this in here in a couple weeks, okay? I might, I might come back in and do this a little deeper. But it, this is the this long life will I satisfy you. Listen to this. And show you my salvation. Long life, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Long life. So you always satisfies your mouth, your necessities and desires. That's your personal age and situation with good so that your youth, renewed, is like the eagle, strong, overcoming, and soaring. Do you see the promise? 
Come on, guys, did you see the promise? Come on, guys, did you see the promise? Stop focusing so much on your problem. This is Sunday morning service, isn't it? Stop focusing so much on your problem and focus on what God says. That's your promise, and that's your ability to overcome anything and everything in your life, regardless of your age, regardless of your situation, regardless of your circumstances. You're an overcomer. God made you that way. Come on, guys. For every problem, there is a promise. How many of you going to focus on the promise? Amen? And not on the problem. Glory to God, can you give him a shout of praise? Can you do it? Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Almost preached yourself out there tonight. How about that? You got a promise, guys. Just stand on the promise. Just stand to your feet and let's pray together. Let's just pray together. Father, I just thank you for your word. God, for every situation, every circumstance in our life, your word is true. Your word is true. The word is true. He says, let me thank you. It doesn't matter how big your problem is. The power of God is able to overcome. Over the mountain. Anything in the past has to do and how it fits. This is what I feel like to do. I really want to think this out and think that I believe the more about it. But I want to thank you. I just promised it was true. For the one year that may be questioning, is there ever going to be any help? Is there ever going to be any release? Is there ever going to be a change? Problem. Because you think it's too personal for anybody else to know. You know who what God wants you to know, and you know who I am. So he says to you, just walk in the corner to the time, and you'll see the problems that the medical is in. Just like when you light a candle and the wick is sticking out of the top of the candle and you light that wick, it burns until it hits the wax. And when the wax sinks with your problem, it can surrender to the problem that I've given you. And in the fire, it is in that fire that you burn the other way. The fire is the very thing you can do. He said, Don't you dare give in. Don't you dare to let it. Away from you. It's the wind of my promise. That's what the Father can do in your life. In Jesus' name, we just thank you and say, Father, thank you for your word. It's true. It will not return to you void, it will accomplish something. Thank you.